I'm Kristen from icstarsquilting.com. Today, I thought it would be fun to kind of give you a little bit look behind the scenes, behind the curtain of how I store my fabric in my sewing room, what's been working for me, what hasn't worked in the past. I thought it would be fun to just kind of let you take a look around. Now, there is a little bit of a disclaimer that I must add. When I came up with the idea for this video, my intention was I'm going to come in here and I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to make it look spectacular. Pinterest isn't going to know what hit it when it sees my stacks of beautiful fabric and all of that. But, you know, the truth is <laughs> it doesn't always look like that around here. You know, um, usually I'll come in, I'll set it up all nice. And then by the time one project is over with, it's due for another cleanup. Creativity is messy and I love it. I love all of it. All that to say, I did not clean this morning. So... What you see is what you get. I'm going to show you how I store my fabric. This is what it looks like, let's say 98% of the time. That other 2% is when I get that like organizing bug in me and I want to go and make everything look perfect. So let's go take a look. Okay, we are going to start with this beautiful tall shelf right here. That, that top shelf is messy. But as you can see, it holds lots of different things. Okay, it has my embroidery stuff up there and um, colored pencils for when I get real crafty and I want to have a good time. Down below here is where my favorite fabric starts. Now this is not all of my fabric, but it is my favorite stash of fabrics. I don't have them organized by style or artist or anything like that. They're just all put up in here. I kind of do have them grouped as far as like, you know, quilts, this would make a cute quilt together. So I have that grouped. You know, this is kind of like a, des, you know, designery paint swatch stuff with some library elements and all that mixed in there that would be really cute, real graphic. So I kind of have it grouped in terms of that, what would make a good quilt. That way I don't have to be looking for the red that I bought to go with another fabric a long time ago. And then I have like, you know, um, seasonal stuff like, patriotic fabric right here all put together okay so those I have nicely bundled up I use these boards right here they're meant for comic book dividers if you were a comic book collector you would use those to divide it and keep your comic books really nice and safe but I use them to wrap my fabric around it's just kind of like mini bolts it keeps it nice and straight and upright you can see down here this is where I ran out of those little fabric boards when I was putting all my fabric up. I need to fix those. But you can tell the difference between slouchy and still organized and nice and straight and pretty. Okay, moving down. These are ones that I have set aside for projects as well. Ones that I will hopefully be using very soon. This is really fun. If you've never done a loom, I totally suggest that you do that just as an off branch to your quilting. Here, this was for another project that I was working on recently. So it's just kind of in, it's in bundles, all right? It's not exactly the most organized fashion, but again, we're being real and it works. So keep moving down. This is a project basket that I have. This is for my hand quilting pieces. Nice big pattern here that I will need to cut out soon. And then keep moving down. You have pattern books, patterns, other templates and things that I need there. And then this box holds my markers and other fun things in there. We're sitting on the floor now because this is my favorite section right here. This is what you see right when you walk into my sewing room. I like to put a lot of my storage closer to the ground. So this table right here is where my sewing machine sits, okay? So this is like on the back side of my sewing machine. I face this way when I am sewing. And this little cube section right here fits right underneath the table, nice and easy. It's out of the way enough to where my feet don't hit it, but it's totally usable space in my sewing room. So what I've done here is this is a lot of my like grab and go things. Right here, I'm gonna pan the camera a little bit. Right here, these are my fat quarters and other little um, sets of like pre-cuts and things right here. Here's a charm pack right here. Um, more pre-cuts, fat quarters, you know, all these little things that I have bought. Let's be honest, um, because I love the fabric and I couldn't, 
I couldn't not buy it. So I, I love keeping these together. This right here has um, my EPP stuff in it for when I want to take it on the go. It's easy. It's grab and go. This has more hand quilting stuff in it. Um, it's just a cookie tin that I bought, but I really like the colors because it kind of matched with that. So it keeps everything nice and organized, ready to go and grab whenever I need it. Right here, let's move over just a tiny bit. Right here, this is kind of where I keep the backings to my quilts. So um, they don't really have a quilt home yet. Um, they're ones that I may have bought on sale or bought too much of, or, you know, probably was a really, really good price. So I bought double because thinking ahead, right? So this one right here, as you can see, it's just a little basket, but it's got some really nice flannel. They had a really good sale on flannel one time. So I bought a bunch of it and I've been just using it for baby blankets. Um, you know, baby quilts that I make where you just, you want something that is so soft for that newborn baby. So I've been using the flannel as backing on my baby quilts. And I also have some Carrie Bloomston fabric right here that I'm dying to make something with, but it's gotta be the right pattern. So this stays forefront in my vision so that I'm always thinking about what I'm gonna do with this fabric because I love it so much. And then, Moving over to here, I have um, fabric bundles that I have bought at quilt shows and craft shows around. So these are jelly rolls, super cute fabrics. This one's got kind of like a sewing theme on it right there. And this one is waiting for a super cute baby blanket. These are more bundles that I bought. I love these. I showed you some of these in my video that I will link to um, on the quilt show and my haul from that. But this is some of the stuff that I got from that. Bundles that are pre-cut fabrics. This one, oh, it's 13 fat quarters. So most of them are fat quarters, but they're designed for grab and go on your quilts. You know, I have a quilt in mind. I want something of these colors. I will design a quilt that is on 21 fat quarters. Boom, done. Pre-matched, don't have to go to the fabric store for those. Down here, I have my panels. Little ones that I have bought that have a specific design on them that I would like to quilt around. You know, it's on the list, right? So these are all my panels that I have bought, different designs. Some of them are little kits um, that or you would cut out and then use other fabric to layer in with it. Over here, in this very far corner one, this is yarn and this is another loom. Seriously, if you're a quilter and you're kind of like ever feeling burnt out or you don't know exactly what to quilt next, go get yourself a loom and a skein of yarn and just, I swear, it's easy, it's kind of mindless. My daughter and I have been really into it in the evenings. We've been making scarves and hats and all kinds of fun things. But anyway, so this is kind of our, um, our yarn stash as well. And that is my grab and go fabric. Hey, guess what? We're down on the floor again. I utilize my desktops and the storage in the back of my desktops a lot because in my room that I have now, there's, most of my wall space has a door or a window or an entryway or it's a pathway or something right in front of it. So I like to utilize underneath my desk spaces. Over here, let me pan over here to show you. Right here is my scrap fabric storage. Now, I told you I did not clean up for you. So that means you can't judge me on this, okay? I understand my scrap fabric is kind of a mess. I don't know what to tell you. That's just how it is, okay? Because at some point I was really, really crazy organized with it and I realized that um, it was it was driving me absolutely insane. So I just decided to give that up for now. In the next coming weeks, I am going to be working on showing you some scrap fabric patterns because 
it's getting to the point where I really do need to organize my scrap fabric better and make use of it because it's just sitting here in bins and you know I'm just holding on to it I'm not using it so what I've got right here is in this one I have reds and pinks in here I have oranges and yellows and again you can't judge me that's a blue and that's a green well okay I told you I didn't clean up for you anyways this has oranges and yellows the one down beneath it right here let me see if I can show you that has blues and greens over here we have like my grays and purples here is more grays and whites ha that is another project I must have just tucked that in before we moved and we'll deal with that later right and then down here is some of my other project pieces that don't really have a home. I don't know, I ran out of colors of the rainbow. So there's that. But these drawers are pretty deep and they are pretty full. I don't know if you can see, let me see if I can grab one here. They're pretty deep and they're pretty full. So I have plenty of fabric storage in here and the drawers I just got from Target. They're just simple, cheap, clear, plastic drawer system you can use whatever you have in the old house I used um, just big Rubbermaid totes for a while then I switched to these when it got a little bit too much out of hand so you know use what you have on hand to store things use your space down below now I know a lot of people don't like to have to get on the floor every time they use stuff but you know it works I have one more storage space to show you. It's where I keep my quilts that are in progress. Perhaps my quilts that have a little bit of a issue and need a time out. That's the next place that I'm gonna show you. Here it is. This cabinet right here. This is where the quilts that are in progress. The quilts that maybe still need the binding sewn on because I lost my mojo and I moved on to something else and I need to go back to them or the quilts that are in timeout, you know, this is where they end up, is this shelf right here. So I have several different projects that I'm working on. Um, I have ones that still need to be quilted, be like this one right here. And even like down here is some more fabric and some more, um, it's kind of a to-do list pile. And so that's why, watch this. Ta-da! Don't have to look at it. It's behind closed doors. I can deal with it another time. What works for me may work for you, it may not, but it's always good to have an idea of the possibilities out there. If your sewing room is something that you struggle with, like it just never feels like it's your space, it never feels right, you don't know where to put your tools, you're buying organizational things out the wazoo, and you never feel organized. I have a course on my blog that is specifically for that. It's called Just 25 Days, and that is really all that it takes. I have broken down step by step what you need to do to create the crafting space of your dream. If you use code YouTube when you check out, it'll get you 10% off of your purchase. Easy as that. 25 days, I promise you, you can do it. I've had so many people show me befores and afters that were unreal. If you have any other questions, please feel free to comment down below. I answer every single one of the comments myself. Hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when I post new videos. I'll talk to you soon. Good luck organizing.